Okay, so... Please be advised. The following program is for adult audience only. Explicit language is used. You have been warned. Yep. Mainly Questo. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to... Let me ask you a question. Episode 5. I'm your host, Mike D. Quas. Jada. How you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right, Quest. That is. Your mother. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love him. Um, and today, we are going to talk about... Segregation. Yeah. That means segregate your ass away from me. <laughs> Give me some ketchup. Not really? that ketchup. Not that ketchup on the right. We don't talk to the ketchup on the right. <laughs> we only talk to the ketchup on the left. Stop. <laughs> so you're being prejudiced against ketchup? Damn right. If it don't say highs on it, I don't want it. <laughs> All right. We make a little bit of a joke about it, but, you know, I think segregation is, is pretty much a... It is, but I'm trying to show you how dumb it sounds. <laughs> Um, here in America, I think we are so, uh, divided as, as a people. And a lot of people will sit back and tell you and say, uh, that race doesn't matter. Religion. You know, there's, you know, that, that Dr. King's dream has finally came true and we all get along and hug and you know what? It's a lie. Yeah. It's, it's a lie. I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't see it that way. I can tell you a story. You wanna hear the story? Well wait a minute. Let, I'm sorry. We gotta we gotta let Miss Jada speak. No, don't, don't speak over top of her. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can go first, sir. No, ladies first. Okay. Mike? Thank you. All right. Oh, Mike <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so question. Okay. So what is your how you feel about it? I know you know where me and Quest stands on it. Um it's it's still happening. It's still going on. However, um, I have mixed views about it. It depends on where you're going, what you're doing, how successful you are, and where your place of employment is. Okay. Some in 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 some schools, in some instance, um, it still exists. Um, with me personally, I um, I just ignore it. Especially, you know, when it's due to ignorance. I try to bypass it. But, however, sometimes it can be a little annoying depending on a certain situation. Um, okay. I mean, you can actually see it. I mean, segregation is it's not even hidden, really. It's not. But, um, it, let's look at our presidential candidates. Mm. <laughs> um, we have on a... Republican side, everybody knows him. Trump. Hmm. Uh, all Mexicans are rapists. Uh, if you're Islamic, you're, you're a terrorist. You're a terrorist. Mm-hmm. Actually, Trump said we should go after their families. I know we talked about that a little bit the last show. I'm just saying. It's creating hatred. Yeah. Division. Division in it. On the hey, even on the Democratic side. Hillary. Hillary. All uh, lives matter. That's hey, hey, look, look. She basically well, said that. Well, let, let's explain all lives la- matter a little bit for for people because they will because you know we have people who are quick to say, well, don't you think all lives matter? And you're right. And I think the Black Lives Matter movement, a lot of people, even a friend, even some people know how took it out of context. For all of you, the Black Lives Matter movement never said that nobody's lives matters. What they were protesting was the police brutality that was mostly prevalent in the black community, in which most of these resulted in deaths and the officers were not charged. And the treatment of people of color when dealing with police officers, whether white or black, in most cases they were white. Now the All Lives Matter started movement started, in my opinion, my opinion, just born out of ignorance of people who just didn't have nothing better. <laughs> and I just, I, I'm serious, like, it took two 
Sec five seconds just to listen and hear what they're saying. Police brutality. They didn't say nobody's life is more important. None of that. Then, you know. Well, we. I mean, we have to look at, too, that when the Black Lives Matter movement is based on because... How, how, that's the best way to say this. The fact of the matter is, is that we have a huge problem in this country where police are shooting unarmed black people proportionately more than they're shooting uh, white people. Or Asian. Or Asian or any other race. That's why the the, the Black Lives Matter movement is, is supposed to be a thing. You have something to say, Mr. No. Yes. I, I'm... I'm, I'm pro black lives matter all lives matter um but what pretty much bothers me is that that's the only time we want to address the issue about black lives mattering mm -hmm. is when law enforcers are utilizing their power to take a black live out where we as a culture do the same thing to each other on a daily basis okay so you know, let's let's look at that. You know, when a certain incident happened where there were there was a drive by, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to name streets, and there was an innocent victim, which happens to be a child, mm -hmm. in the mix of the crossfire, was injured and killed. I didn't see a lot of people advocating for that child. I didn't see a lot of our people marching and 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 pro Black Lives Matter and when that happened. Mm -hmm. However, when law enforcers do it, no one has the right to take life unless they're being threatened. However, it mm -hmm. depends on who you are and what, what was the cause or the purpose of you doing it. And retaliation to any type of gang violence, drug uh, exchange, or anything that's dealing in your community that's dealing with someone who is not law enforcement should always be relevant. It shouldn't just only be less march, less protest when a uh, 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 officer of a different culture pour fire on. We should do it all the time. I agree. We live in our communities, and the people who are doing it need to respect the communities. I agree. Now, and you're right. We should call these issues. But I would also like to point out, when Jamal shoots Tyrone, Jamal goes to jail. Right, true. When Officer Billy shoots Tyrone, Officer Billy gets a paycheck, a paid vacation, and a bonus. If Jamal <laughs> goes to jail, if someone sees or 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 pretty much say, oh, I witnessed Jamal doing it. But, because most of the time people are afraid to even speak out, but they can record an officer. But they will not record their own people doing it. Well, here's the thing. More times out of ten, if you shoot somebody in this city, you, you ha your chance of getting caught are pretty high. Actually, I I wouldn't. Well, say Well, I wouldn't say that. No. High, but I would not say that. No. I, there, there are so many there are un unsolved, unsolved I mean, cases, and, and then to, people I, can. Let me correct myself. God damn! Don't don't cut me off. I said I take that back. Let me re let me re recap that statement. Yes, there are some cases where no, where some people get away with it. Yes, it is, and I totally agree. But I can. But on the same note, I don't hear white people going out. When they're all lives matter, everybody lives matter. I don't say hear them protesting about Dylan Roof, who shot nine black people in a church and who also also got a Burger King sandwich because of it, and is also rate has nine million dollars because people raised this for him. I don't see that. I don't see white people going out protesting the mass shooting in Colorado. I don't hear white people going out protesting the mass shooting in Connecticut. I don't see that. So, yes, we can say, you know, black people, they only go when the police comes up. Well, yes, that's totally true. But we should do it all the well, time. No, we should do it all the time. And, and then uh, we can raise money for people who, you know, I'm saying, if they're sticking together culturally and we're divided. Right. That's why Tyrone's going to jail. Because we did as a people, do the crime? Did do the if crime? he got caught doing the crime, but but, that, but that's, that's enough. He did a crime. You should serve your penance. You did a you committed a crime. Right, right. You should serve true your that. Penance. True, true. That, that is totally different from you have a mass shooter who's who did who killed nine people, openly admitted it, and then on top of that, you have people saying he did a service by killing these monkeys, by killing these niggas, by killing them. And you let him raise money. Yes, there's no law against it, but the fact that you have people who supported his ethnic cleansing act. And this man was not shot. 
He was not beaten. He was not tased. They took the man to Burger King. So that goes to say that we need to be more proactive in going against things like that. Because we'll still go out and still go on as if it didn't even exist. No, it's still going on. But here's the thing. Crime is, crime is not a black thing. And I, I really think people have this in their mind that when crimes happen, it's a black thing. It's not. Let's, crime is crime. Crime is crime. Now, let's take an example. If Baltimore was mostly white and all these things were going on, you would never hear the term white on white crime. Mm -hmm. You never hear this term. We're the only ones that I have seen that will sit up here and will defend uh, the statement, oh, what we're saying about black on black crime, which I think is the most dumbest thing ever. I know, I know, I know I'm taking a while, but I had to get this out. No, it's fine. It's, it's stupid. It's fucking stupid. The fact, for you to say that, well, when we commit crimes against each other, so when a white person shoots another white person, isn't that white on white crime? Yes or no? That's right, white on white crime. Okay, so I don't hear no white people going out protesting white on white crime when Asians beat up other Asians. I don't hear Asians yelling out Asian on Asian crime when crime happens in a Hispanic or Latino neighborhood. I don't hear them saying, well, we fighting each other. You don't hear that. It's only us. We're the only dummies. Yes, I'm saying it. We're the only dummies that will sit here and lend a hand to people who have, who mean us no good at all. Do you, I'm, all right. Check this. Like, find, I'm, this is what I find interesting. You ever seen that show with Morgan Freeman, um, Through the Wormhole? I heard about it. I think I seen one episode. I think the episode is called, um, Are We All Bigots? So, uh, on this particular show, he, uh, he had a, he had a psychologist run this experiment where it involved a gun and some photo um, graphs of um, people from different race. Mm -hmm. this, just to see how fast we assess danger. Okay? So he ran the experiment with uh, an everyday guy, you know, um, just shooting back and forth. And he found that the, that the everyday white guy is actually faster quicker to shoot a picture of a black man holding a cell phone. Um, but, but then he also ran it with a black guy. He is also quicker to shoot a, a picture of a black man with a cell phone um, um, just, as, just like the white guy is. So they, they, they actually linked it to the culture of the news media portraying black people as being more aggressive, more linked to crime. You know, it's 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 kind of funny where stati statistically black people and white people commit the same amount of crimes at the same rate, do the same amount of drugs at the same rate, but yet the black culture seems to always get the worst of it yeah that's that's true like i said i'm not really saying that it's right that there's no punishment or no justification for anything that law enforcers do because they are supposed to be here to protect and serve mm -hmm. however <clears throat> what i'm saying is if we want results then we have to stand up and do more we do be active more you know, um, there are a lot of single mothers raising males, which if we had more male involvement mm -hmm. to redirect children from being, you know, out in the street more, mm -hmm. you know, everyone wants to be a part of something. So, mm -hmm. you know, with that being said, mm -hmm. we must, you know, we must look forward to, to doing something. Right. And, you know, it, more than just marching, more than just coming up with a line saying Black Lives Matter, everyone have to be involved, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and if there are some cops that are doing these things, then why not join the force and be that good cop? You know, mm -hmm. we, we take all of these cops that's coming from California, um, different other areas, and they don't know the communities like we do. 
So when they come here, they get an image of what, oh, okay, well, this is the graphics. We have high crime in the 21217 area, high crime in the 21216. So these are the areas we want you all to walk the beat. And this is what it is, you know. And they're being trained and told these things, but they don't go into the community to get to know what the community people are like. Ask them, how can we be here to assist you all? What can we do? You know, if they're not going to stand, if we're not going to take a stand for it, neither are they. The first reaction for them to do is to basically my life feel threatened because, oh, there's a man running with this or there's a black man doing this. Let me pull my gun. And you're right. Now, based on that alone, then we had to look at why is it that you actually remember we was watching it with Morgan Freeman. I think it was essential into the wrong where they did a study that showed many officers feel that a black man with a cell phone is more threatened than a white. I man. just talked about you that. You did? Yeah. I'm sorry. I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that point up now. As far as the, the, the community, yes, I feel as though we need to do a lot more than marching. I, I agree. Now, I, the, I, I think the, one of the, the things we need to stop doing is that we need to stop demonizing the police. Yes. Exactly. I, 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 exactly. I, you know, I, I used to work for uh, Target, and I stood right there, and you really couldn't tell the difference too much if, at first glance between my uniform and the police uniform that was work that I was working in but I would have black parents come and say hey um my son is acting up you need to come over here and get him and I'm like no you know I, you know and have the son kind of running away from me saying you know he's going to lock you up he's going to lock right, you up right you know right. where I would have a white family come in and say oh go shake the police officer's hand honey um that's the guy who's going to help you when you get in trouble. And you're right. Now, but also with that, in that scenario, you also got to look at the same thing with the environment. If you live in an environment where you see, police are a negative sign, like, and today, that's today. Imagine today's generation of kids coming up, seeing the police brutality case, the police shootings. In their minds, the police equals death. That just equals a negative context. And look, I'm no, and I'm not no different because I thought I was the same way when I was little. I was the same with police equal to bad sign to me in some cases. But we had to break that mold. Now, when it comes to the police in the community, That's... just hear me, hold on. Let me, let me finish. Mm -hmm. Just the police in the community. There has, this is where the problem comes in. It's, and I feel as though it's a moral issue. If I'm an officer and you officer and I see you break the law, it is my duty to report, to report that. Right. Now, when you have officers who don't do that, whether they're the quote unquote bad cops or the quote unquote good cops, in my book, you're the same. You broke the law. You allow a law to be broken, and you let it happen. I had an officer tell me that, I'm not going to say where, mm -hmm. He an officer that told me that, well, he found a, he pulled over a fellow officer who was drunk driving. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of her locking him up, oh, man, I'm going to give you a ride home. I'm going to follow you home. He's drunk. You're still going to follow. You're going to follow him home. What was the professional courtesy? That right there in itself is a problem. Mm -hmm. In the case where... The young man was shot in Chicago by the police. And the only reason that surfaced story because the reporter got it out there and recorded it, the officers were lying for him to cover that up. Yeah. So we see, so it's not just about, well, do good police. And those officers could have been great. They could have been helping communities and doing all that. But the fact that they sat there and lied to protect the fellow officer who normally broke the law after either sworn an oath is a problem. It's just your the, the problem is integrity. You know, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, let's look at this though. Who kills more people? Police? Or people? Or, or people? Or the, or the people in the neighborhood? I, I, I just, I, you know, I just want to be honest. I'm not taking sides on this, but you know, I mean, the, the thing is, we want to deal with facts here. Right. And, and in most cases, and, and in some cases, you would have where it's going to be in the neighborhood. Now, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to defend it. I'm going to be neutral. It is in the neighborhood. Now, when most people say, well, that's it, so y'all, like, somebody told me, well, black people have a bad culture, and that's why, no, that's stupid, because I can surely, I have friends who done lived in the whitest of areas, and I tell you, it's not the black people that's out there selling drugs, it's the white people, it's the white people who gang bang, it's the white people doing the shoes, it's the black people who are actually going to work every day trying to provide for their families and live right. So, the whole issue with that about, oh, and black neighborhoods is this, that's not necessarily true. We had to break that stigma. And again, the media plays a big part in that. Well, you portray violent crimes as solely as black people, and then you put the stigma behind, well, uneducated, dangerous, thug, 
um, quote Hillary Clinton, super predators. Um, you create this image. You create this image that if they're black, your first, your first, mind, your first reaction of mine is going to be on the fence. They're a threat. Okay. With that being said, we do it to ourselves as well. Scenario. True story. I'm not going to name the agency I work for, but it's a well-known agency that pays good money. Um, I was in training at an academy. And my work ethics speak highly for themselves. And I'm not trying to boost myself. What I'm saying is when you go out into the world of corporate, you have to represent yourself one way. When you're around your peers, you can represent yourself another way. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Whether it's called fake it till you make it, however you want to quote it, it that's just the reality of it. You're not going to sit at an interview and talk to your 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 employer, your soon-to-be employer, the same way you would talk to your peers. Again, I was broken down in a group at an academy I was at. Um, there was this gentleman. We were going around in our group asking people where do they live. I, for one, told this guy the area in which I lived. He happened to live in the same neighborhood. He said to me, you don't live in my neighborhood because you don't act that way. I said, well, tell me how my neighborhood is supposed to act. And it's a low poverty area. He said, you're not loud. You're not good. You don't even seem like you'll get into any type of confrontation. You just sit there and, and, and made this, this whole perception of what your neighborhood is portraying in front of people who live in better areas. I'm supposed to act a certain way because I live there. So if we're doing it ourselves, what makes you think that people of other cultures and people who live in, you know, good, greater communities or better community or high poverty, poverty communities, homeowners association communities won't feel the same way if we do it ourselves. Now here's the we tear up our own communities and people think it's okay. I asked the guy to pick up a piece of paper. He walked past, threw it on the ground. Why would you do that? If you want our community, if, if, if we as a people want our communities to be respected or we want to be respected, we have to first start with ourselves. And I agree. Now, and close with that also is intelligence. Intelligence plays a major factor. Mm -hmm. Just because I see you and you're black and I automatically assume something about you and I act on those assumptions, that shows me as a lesser intelligent creature. Because we as human beings... And it's and we don't and I wish in, in a perfect world it would be this way. I should not jump to the first conclusion that because you're a black male that you're you're automatically a threat. Mm -hmm. You're automatically mm -hmm. a threat. Even though even if I'm bombarded with these ideologies every day, I should be able to rationalize, I'll say, stop, let me let me put those thoughts in the back of my mind and get to know this person and take people as individuals. The problem is though, whether black, white, Asian, Hispanic, and I got friends of all different nationalities. I work for Asian people. And I've seen it and I talk to them about this. And some days they agree, sometimes they just say fuck it. You know? <laughs> Whatever happens to y'all benefits me. That's basically what they told me. <laughs> True so statement. whether they're being sarcastic or not, the fact that you sit out your mouth kinda of made me look at you a certain way, but we're gonna get on that later. But that's just intelligence in general. Yes, I'm a black male, yes, I have locks. Will most people view me as a threat? Absolutely. Most people would think, oh, you're going to rob somebody. You're going to rob me. But once I talk to them, I'm smarter than them. So, again, it's not my job, me personally, I feel, it's not my job to ease your insecurities. That is not my job. My job is to do what I came to do, leave you alone, you leave me alone, we have a hunky-dory day. You the, moment you cross, the moment you step outside of that, whatever happens, happens. But the point is, we need to start as a. I feel as though we need to stop catering, trying to cater to these people's fears. I.e., you get the sense, well, you don't talk black, you talk white. What is talking black and what is talking mm -hmm. white? Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm sorry. Just because you use larger words than I and is, <laughs> and you and you can. Nah, I'm losing words today. Just because you can speak well. And have a large vocabulary does not mean you have common sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Yeah, but go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, and, and, and what is and, 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 and does it mean that you speak white? You speak well. My mom was one that wouldn't let you say Doug. What the heck is a Doug? My mom would. <laughs> My mom would be all over you five seconds. So the word is dog. dog. Okay. Use, it's you, not zinc. <laughs> Sink. Sink. It's not scrimps. It's, it's shrimp. shrimp. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Street. I crossed it's the street. The street. Now, some cases people do have an accent. That's how they're going to talk in that area. That's fine. But here's the thing. Well, as you get to a certain age, look, I say, I'm, I may slip up and you, and most people say I have a Baltimore ass in the way I say two. I don't know. They, that's a big thing where I went to D.C. Everybody's like, say two. Fuck you. But that's how I respond to some people. Like, and, I don't know how to say two. Like, they, they say, well, no. Cause well, how do they say, say it's the way y'all say it. It's two. T-W-O or T-O or T-O-O. It's all sound the same. Two. Two. But again, when you <laughs> live in a certain area, those certain, you know how you talk is going to play, it's going to play a role. Yeah. But speaking a bastardized version of English does not make you white. Yes, American, American stand, American's English is not the original English. Y'all didn't know that, did you? It's not. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's in and of itself English. <laughs> no, but most, but certain certain words and certain pronunciations. Well, put like we don't speak the king's English. Well, but it depends upon what you're looking at because you have people. It, it English varies from different depending upon regions that, that which yeah. you're in, and even within England, where English <laughs> developed, um, you have. They have their uh, their own certain dialect there as yeah, well. That In fact, there's a there's I'm I, I'm trying to remember the island, um, that's sort of off. Uh, oh, is is right off is is right on the eastern coast. Right off. There's actually some people right now that you probably um, wouldn't understand a word of it, and but because they speak the old English. Hmm. Is it America? Yeah, it's in it's America. On, oh, is it because on, it, but on the close to like Georgia? It's on the. Uh, it, no, no, it's like off of like going up towards Maine. And, oh, you talking about up there? Oh, well, yeah, because they still speak the old original King's English. We no, but but no, it's it. But I'm it just. It sounds different. It, it, it sounds completely different. So, uh, uh, we getting off track on that. Right. But anyway, on the, the point is, is those <laughs> people talking white, talking black. The problem is again, you live in a, a society, a society that. Trains you at a young age that these people act like somebody looks like this, acts like this, somebody looks like this, acts like this. You know what? Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. What makes you white? What makes you black? Hmm. It's just a, it's, now again, we're talking about like acting. It's no, it's no different. But that's what I'm getting to. In society, in this society, you are trained at a young age. If they look like this, they supposed to act like this. Hmm. If they look like this, they're supposed to act like this. If they look like this, they're supposed to act like this. I give you Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He was a prime example. He was, and, and again, many people said, "Oh, he's just acting white." But I so, and I, I had to tell you, stop. Let's look at it from this perspective. Look where he grew up. Actually, you remember the episode? I better say, remember the episode where they called him out on that, and, and Carlton got Carlton went in on him. You remember that? No. Dude, no. Well, this this what happened. So. They were getting on Carlton. It was a pro black man. He was getting on Carlton about you acting white. You're doing all this because he likes, you know, quote unquote white people music. He dresses like quote unquote white people and all this. And Carlton got hood on him. And like he he went into the guy just basically look. Just because this is the music I like and these are the things I like does not make me any less black or means I don't have the same issues or see things the same way as you. I was just blessed to be in a family that had money, but does not mean. That my life is all peaches and cream, and that I'm a good old boy, and I think we as a community we have program. We have yes, we as black people have done it. Media has done it too. We have programmed our kids that at being smart, being educated, talking in complete sentences, dressing nice. Well, taking the dressing part out because that's subjective. But anything that makes you a better citizen, a better person, is quote unquote acting white. How about that? That's saying good hair. That is the most dumb. I swear, I hate I, shit. You, you, most people don't even know where good hair came from. Good hair was it actually came from slavery, where your grain of hair closely matches the slave master's hair. Hmm. And you consider uh, that means you had good hair. Hmm. Okay. That it's that is turned. that is asinine. <laughs> okay. It, it is. Okay. Your hair on your head is good hair. Is good hair. If you got hair on your head, you have good hair. Sorry, you, sorry bald people. <laughs> <laughs> I, but still, uh, uh, they at one used point, to. At one point, you did, though. <laughs> yeah. 
that, that, that that's all that means. African hair has a has a curl pattern to it. Most people don't know that. If you learn your curl pattern, you and learn how your hair reacts to the weather, like 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 they do, then you can manage it. It it can be easily managed. But don't get caught up in saying, "Oh, you got good hair because, because your hair looks straight, color like Becky's hair." Yeah. Or or because it is not. They got waves in it. Yeah. Or it's curly. Yeah, exactly. Good hair. Mm-hmm. They say like I, said, all I got my locks. I wish somebody would say you got you have bad hair. Well, oh, they think I got a perm and it's not even perm. I wish somebody would say I had bad hair. You got bad hair. Your mother should have swallowed you. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A little, oh, make it a little bit. No. <laughs> Break it down. You went, you went from rated all to X real, real, real quick. No, I'm going to tell you why I feel like it. Because, look, I was in high school, right? Mind you, I'm dark. I got dark skin. Uh -huh. A girl who was darker than me said, I will look better if I was a shade or two lighter. But you're darker than me. You're like my t-shirt. And that's, that's even worse. Too. And that's even worse. And all these results... Yes, people came from slavery. For all of you one who made the argument, well, what about the Holocaust and blah, blah, blah. Slavery had resounding effects that's still going prevalent today. Yes, the Holocaust was a bad situation, but I think it's, it's disgusting to compare tragedies just for a political or a philosophical or societal view. It's, it's, it's petty and it's cheap. Yes, the Holocaust was a bad thing. Yes. But for all those people saying, well, stop talking about slavery happened so long ago. Well, the Holocaust happened a long time ago, and 9-11 happened a long time ago, so get over it. <laughs> yep, I said it. 9-11 happened a long time ago. Get over it. If I had to get over slavery and the effects of it still resound to the day, and we can see it, get over 9-11. Matter of fact, you feel so strongly about it, go enlist and go fight. Hmm. That's real. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, it's so. But let's get into some facts real quick. Yeah. Real quick, real quick. So the Jim Crow laws from the 1880s into the 1960s, a majority of American states enforced segregation through Jim Crow laws. Now, I'd like to point out a part of Jim Crow that most people don't know is that under Jim Crow law, slavery was still legal if you were a black man and you were incarcerated. Many people didn't know that. So slavery, in and, and quote-unquote, didn't technically enter around the 60s when the Jim Crow laws ended. Now people didn't know that. Well, it, it's still, if mass incarceration is the it's, new it's slavery. slavery. And I'm, I'm making quotation marks because you can't see it. Right. But I'm <laughs> talking about chattel slavery, quotation mark, quotation mark. <laughs> well, lynchings, burnings, whippings. All this did not technically enter the 1960s when Jim Crow was abolished. Well, I mean, the same things still happen in jail. They still happen today. I mean, they, all over the country. Even touch it, they Think about how many people get stabbed in jails on on a daily basis. It's ridiculous. And then, like I said, most a lot of these jobs where it's supposed to be the criminal justice system comes into play is a loss of integrity that mm -hmm. that played a role. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, slavery was slave catchers were if you want to be technical, one of the first forms of law enforcement in this country, in the Republic of America, not this country, just the Republic known as America, the U.S., United States of America. They were one of the first forms of law enforcement. But if you want to get into segregation, I feel as though many people don't realize that even with white people, they segregate a lot of white people. Like, um, yes, a lot, a lot of Europeans that came in from New England, they did not like Irish, Italians, sometimes French, depending on, sometimes it was the French they would go against, sometimes the Germans. Germans. Especially yeah. Germans. Germans were one. But if you were Irish or Italian, on, from white people's standpoint, you was no better than us, to some. Mm -hmm. The black people. Now, when Italians started coming over more, the idea was, I had to be more white, I just can't be black, and I'm fine. Asians started coming in the same descent. The cycle keeps continuing. The fact is, America puts up this, this idea. As long as you're not black, we or will brown. Say, or brown. Yes. That's yes for my Latino and Puerto Ricans and Hispanics. <laughs> yes. Because they, we, we, we with you. We all in the same boat. The only thing that separates us is where the drop boat dissolve at. Where the boat drop dissolve at. That's the only thing that's different about us. Don't believe me? Look it up. <laughs> uh but, speaking on that, you heard, you have you been keeping track of the Peter Lane case? 
No, what is that? Okay, so in New York, a police, a Chinese NYPD officer out of fear shot an unarmed black man while he was in the stairwell. Okay. So the, the cop, he's been charged, went to trial, he's been charged, he's going to do time. So a lot of Chinese people were protesting and saying they're scapegoating him because and they want him to get the same treatment as white officers when they shoot black people. That he should get off. Because white people get off of doing it. Hmm. Now... When I first heard this, I sat back and I thought to myself, I see their point. I see what they're saying. But, no. 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 He was an officer of the law before he was shot. It doesn't matter his ethnicity. He's an officer of the law. He broke the law. He should face trial. Yes, I feel as though not just because he's Chinese, but all officers, black, white, Hispanic, any creed of color should face trial if they break the law. But then what was funny to me was you had other you had other Asians from different countries from like Vietnam, Filipino, um it was a group called the 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 um Hamas. I can't pronounce the name correctly. Hamas. Hamas. I can't pronounce the name correctly. I think it's Hamas. I could it might be. Um they said fuck him. Cause he's I, I mean this is their word, they just said fuck him because with within their own realm Chinese do the same thing white people do, if you ask them. So I don't think segregation in this country is just a black and white thing, even though that's what it, it developed from being a black and white thing. We're still always on the harsh end of it than anybody else. But it's an all-around thing that all people of color, that if you're not European in America, if, you're just, if your skin color isn't white, that you're going to face it. The only thing with when it comes to some demographics of Asian cultures is... As long as you stay in your place, we ain't going to have no beef with you. When you step outside of your place, we're going to check you. And I think that's what happened in the Peter Lane case. And not just my words, it was other Asians who also said this too. He stepped out. We, and this is their words, a lot of Asians feel as though we can play ball with them, but they will check you and put you back in your place. And I think we've seen a case of that today with the Peter Lane case. We're going to check you. You're not white. We let you have privileges here, but we're going to check you. Yes, some people are going to feel offended by I said I said that, but learn your history. Hmm. Read a book. Okay, so uh, let's we're going to probably make this a short show today. Uh, what are your ideas of how to fix this? I feel as though in order for this to be fixed. Everybody will have so their, people gonna have to lose their privileges, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And as I was talking to an Asian guy about this, he agreed. People gonna have to lose their privileges. Later on, I asked him. He don't want to lose his privileges though. Well, just I'll make it short. He didn't want to lose his privileges. So certain privileges and ideas, I had to go and be put to the side. And I really think that the reason they haven't is because some people feel as though I feel as though. That some people feel as though their kids, as far as education, would not be able to succeed if these walls were down. And, and that's just the reality of it. I mean, you have many bright, bright students in the inner city, even that Baltimore City Community College, shout out to them, who can compete with Ivy League schools. I actually had a guy from Harvard came to my school and said, do not be intimidated. You are just as smart. It, in most cases, probably more smarter than them. More smarter, smarter, smarter. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to. He, you do words for a living, Quest. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Had a moment down from Baltimore. Excuse me. <laughs> but um, who said we are smarter than them? I actually visit Princeton when my cousin was there, and I have met people who I know I'm smarter than you. So the fact that we these barriers are there to keep people in their social and economical bracket and educational brackets to keep them in line and maybe every now and then we'll let one climb out just to say hey you know nothing's holding you back racism is over you can do it <laughs> and even with some of those people that we call it that I feel as though need to get back to the community that needs to go back and say look this is how you can do it there is a way out instead of listening to people who never been in a hole tell you how to get out of the hole what about you, Ms. Jaden? Uh, I mean, he kind of wrapped it up and s pretty much had some, some a good idea of how it can be, you know, 
improved, but um, it, it, it to me it goes deeper than that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have these issues with other cultures because again we are the most divided <laughs> culture there is, and then two we as a people start supporting each other, meaning paying into black businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, promoting one another, building capital. It, it goes deeper than that, you know. Um, that problem is going to be there. It's going to be there. I mean, change is yet to come when we are ready to change. You know, some people are just comfortable at what's going on, you know. It's it's there it's there, it's been there, and they're just like, so what do you want me to do? That's not the attitude. Okay. And my, you? My the way I see it. Remember um when Tyra Banks had a show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she would um The model with a big forehead, right? <laughs> She's still pretty. She, we all got a big forehead too. She's still pretty. I have a big forehead. What are you trying She's to still say? Pretty. Thank you. I appreciate that quest. Okay. Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> when um, she would dress people up as other races hmm. and then send them out, you know, and really see the the if you're if you're black, just how condescending some white people can be, right? You know, and and if you're black, just the the different level of respect that you would you that you wouldn't normally get from a white person just because you match their skin color. Mhm. Mm sure. You know, so I kind of think maybe we should do more experiments like that or you know, you you spend some if you're white or you're Asian, you spend some time living with another race, maybe for a month, maybe for a week. You know, get get yourself a chance to actually learn about the other culture and and realize that really this is all skin deep. Your your skin just so happens to have less melanin than mine does. <laughs> That's Black all it crap. does. Black don't crap. <laughs> Ashley, I like you guys to read and check out a book. Oh, I know everybody just hearts just burn when I said the word book. Uh, reading, reading, reading. Read. 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 Oh. <laughs> There's actually a book called Black Like Me, and I read it in school. It was very interesting. It was about a um, a white guy who wanted to do an experiment. He wanted to see how black people got treated during around the early ninety, the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. So what he did, he took these pills and that made his skin a little bit darker. And he went out to experience what it's like to be black in the South. Mm -hmm. And he was in New Orleans. It's a really good book. I, I encourage everybody to read it. And just adding on to what causes division, I think religion, to some extent, causes a major division between us as a people. Like, we will not come together for the sake of a single issue because this single issue affects all of us because of our skin color. But we're going to beef while well, you are Muslim, I'm Christian, we can't stand together on a police brutality issue. As we yeah. seen with the Jamal Bryant writing Louis Farrakhan on the World Channel, you guys can check that out. That video is on YouTube too. And I thought it was ignorant. We we cannot come together for the sake of being black because you believe a different God than I do. But really, if you want to be technical about it, all of them came from one person who was Abraham. And if we go by the geographical region he was in, he was of darker tone. <laughs> Drop mic again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and close this show out. You can catch the show on Facebook.com slash Ask Learn Question. Again, YouTube um, is Let Me Ask You a Question on YouTube. With the question mark. With the question mark. Search channels, it'll come right up at the top. Um, Twitter page is at Ask Learn Question. <laughs> Again, email is at, is at, ah, I can't talk I today. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Our email is at askslearnquestion at gmail.com. Please like the page, su subscribe, share this with your friends, and don't forget uh, 
part of the money from our show goes into the schools here in Baltimore. We pick a school every month um, to donate our funds to and and or equipment. Um, we're, we're trying to do the best we can here at, in Baltimore and uh, stamp out ignorance because I really, really, really want to get rid of that number two rating and ignorance that we have here in America. Y'all guys can help too. It's America, not America. 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 And we're from Baltimore, Maryland, not Merlin. It's Maryland. It's an accent. It's Merlin. It's Merlin. Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Catch y'all later.